Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. There's no better place to be than in church today. Yeah. Around God's word of law, showing me that I'm a goofed up, goofball sinner. And us all, poor, miserable sinner is how uh, we put it in our, our, the worship service. And yet, not fixating on that, but being reminded fully and uh, in, in an incredible way that our sins are forgiven because of what Jesus has done for us. Suffered and died on the cross. Which the world would say, wow, well, that sure is stupid. Crazy people. And yet, that's what the Bible says. And so it's not being ignorant or being a lackey. But God's word says it and that settles it. Otherwise, we're kind of back and forth. It's like, oh, is it really? Oh, let's try this. And it's like, well, that's what the world's doing. It's like, <laughs> back to the Bible. So it's like as a kid, well, that was a Baptist program. <laughs> shouldn't listen to it. But it's like God's word still is proclaimed by, in many and various ways, God has spoken and he's spoken through the prophets and the prophetesses, men and women, and people like you and me. In fact, not just like, it's you and me, right? And so today uh, is uh, the seventh Sunday of seventh day of Christmas, I believe, and uh, we celebrate being in God's house, around God's word, the scriptures that we focus on are uh, about Simeon. So we can say, well, where are the angels and where's the, they call it flash and flare, here's Simeon. Well, Simeon's you and me. And it's not only Simeon, it's Anna, the prophetess. And the prophetess is just women sharing God's word proclaiming God's word. And we know that uh, what prophecies are true come to pass. And so if we stay with God's word, we know his word endures forever. So we're on solid ground. Thanks be to God. Privilege for me to be here. Vern Rothlob, thank you for covering in Edmonton. And as I spoke a few times as uh, Ann Abrams, who admonished me, saying, why do you leave me? She's not here. She's uh, resting in Abraham's bosom, as it were. Uh, she's in, in heaven, like in a place where there's no more tears and no more mourning, no more sorrows. And we grieve, and yet we don't grieve without hope, uh, the hope that doesn't fade. So we hope that the Oilers might win the Stanley Cup hope that the Edmonton Eskimos might get their name back. I do. It's like, what's wrong with Eskimos? They like their name. And maybe they'll win the, uh, the Grey Cup, but who cares, really? I don't. I'm glad that we can be exercising our minds, our brains, and celebrating together, and even eating, and holding hands at times, and giving hugs, and kisses on the cheek. Yeah. And on that note, at Christ the King Lutheran, just in terms of intimacy, there's a woman just loved to kiss on the lips. And it's like, wow, in terms of that, she kissed my, the organist and on the lips, or no, her, her husband, and organist rose up and says, don't do that to my husband. Yeah, because there there's a time and place for everything, right? But a holy kiss on the cheek is always good. But even a hug or a human touch is really special, especially if it's meant. So today, yeah, God calls us to not neglect God's word or the preaching of it, but regard it as holy and gladly hear and learn it. So that's great. Another point is that friendship with the world makes us enemies with God. It's not David saying. That's God's word. It's, if you want to look it up, it's James chapter 4, verse 4. And we don't relish that, but it just, that's it. It's like, come to God's house, hear God's word. Let God's word dwell in you and me richly and use it as a standard, the best standard of life and for life. So today Jesus invites us to be here, also to come to the Lord's Supper and be per uh, persuaded by his promise to forgive our sins, to strengthen us, and give us the assurance of life and salvation, receiving Jesus' true body and blood for the forgiveness of sins. 
So again, I taste bread, I taste wine, but if God says it's his body and blood, that's what it is. So if that's your belief then that Jesus is truly present in and with under the elements of bread and wine, then come to the altar when we have Holy Communion and receive Jesus as he's promised to forgive. Receive from him and him. And if you're not able at this time to receive the bread and wine, then come anyway, cross your hands, cross your arms, and receive the blessing that God gives. And even if you don't come, receive it anyway. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be through me, but uh, God blesses us through each other for sure. So please stand if you're able to. If you're not able to, that's fine also. We are gathered together in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, being together of the Holy Spirit, and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Also with you. If we say that we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves, we're kidding ourselves, we're lying to ourselves, we're just totally ignorant of God's word, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's a lot of hope in that last sentence that, yeah, God cleanses us from all unrighteousness and forgives us. So let's confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Well, upon this, your confession, mine also, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the forgiveness and grace of God to all of us. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stay standing for the hymn. Sing in exaltations, 
Sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Christ the Lord. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus to thee be glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appear thee. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Let's pray together the prayer that collects the thoughts and themes for this Sunday. O oh God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may be ever alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the thought of the day. Good morning. I hope you've had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, I ordered this book. It's called uh, The Gift of Christmas. Um, it's a book of devotions by Sheila Walsh. And it just arrived in the mail two days ago. So it, it's, a, it's a book of Advent. So, you know, as Tom always tells us, it's no time like the present to start planning for the next Christmas. So I feel this would be a wonderful book. And in, so instead of going through it devotion by devotion uh, each day, I just began reading it and it brought a lot of inspiration. So the timing was maybe God's timing. So the one I stumbled on yesterday was called The Holly. Uh, as the story goes for Sheila is uh, that they were headed off to a Christmas Eve service and uh, there was a, they didn't notice it, but someone had dropped off a present at their door. And when they arrived home, they found this present. And on the present, it said, may this remind you of our hope. And inside was a beautiful wreath made out of shiny, bright green holly leaves, covered in red berries, perfect as a centerpiece for their Christmas table. She said she lifted it out of the box and carried it over to the table, but a thorn on one of the holly leaves pricked her finger, and it began to bleed. She placed the wreath on the table and ran some cold water over her, her finger and watched as the scarlet blood spread out in the sink. She says, I realized what a profound reminder that the gift was of the true meaning of Christmas, a crown of thorns, a crown of hope. So she put a band-aid on her, her finger and then began to read from the Bible more. So at that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devoted and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God and saying, 
So th the picture on the bulletin is Simeon and you notice the light coming on the baby Jesus. And this is one of my favorite passages. Sovereign Lord, now, now let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations and he is the glory of your people Israel. As we sing, in our church, the new Dominus, hey? <laughs> it can't, I couldn't begin to imagine that, my, how the Mary and Joseph must have felt. It was one more glorious confirmation of the hope this child would bring to the world for Simeon. What a miracle. For Simeon, he had gone to the temple year after year, waiting for the baby to come. Uh, he held the hope up high and then he turned to Mary and what he said next must have pierced her heart like the sharpest edge of a thorn. This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall and many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. Mm -hmm. A sword will pierce your very soul. Luke doesn't tell us what Mary was thinking at that time, but you can just imagine as she gazed into the eyes of her eight day year old baby boy, he was such, uh, that such a thing could be possible. She had reflected on the words of Gabriel had told her about her son. He will be very great. He will be called the son of the most high and he will reign over Israel forever. But there was nothing about a sword. Mm -hmm. As I closed my Bible, I realized that there was all, it was already Christmas morning and that the last glowing ember in the fireplace was gone. I turned off the lights of the tree and then carefully moved the holly wreath to the, from the edge of the table into the center. I stood for a moment in quietness and then thanked Jesus for the hope he gives us uh, and the cost. Uh, the ho he gives us that cost him so much. His crown of thorns gives us the crown of hope. Holly will always be a part of our Christmas in our home, she says. Let it remind you of the eternal hope we have in Christ. So for next year, maybe we should add to our caroling, the holly and the ivy. I don't know if you've ever sang that song. Just like Gertie, we're getting ready for caroling next year already. And just the one verse from the song, it says, the holly bears a prickle as sharp as a thorn and Mary bore sweet Jesus Christ on Christmas day in the morn. Thank you. Thank you. dawn to, to the setting of the sun I will stand on every promise of your word words of power strong to save that will never pass away I will stand on every promise of your word Secure, I can stand on every promise of your word. When I stumble and I sin, condemnation pressing in, I will stand on every promise of your word. 
You are faithful to forgive that in freedom I might live. So I stand on every promise of your word. Guilt to innocence restored, you remember sins no more. So I'll stand on every promise of your word. When I'm faced with anguish choice, I will listen for your voice. And I'll stand on every promise of your word. Through this dark and troubled land, you will guide me with your hand. As I stand on every promise of your word. And you've promised to complete everything begun in me. So I'll stand on every promise of your word. Hope that lifts me from despair, love that casts out every fear. As I stand on every promise of your word. Not forsaken, not alone, for the Comforter has come. As I stand on every promise of your word. Grace sufficient, grace for me, grace for all who will believe. We will stand on every promise of your word. Isaiah 61, 10, 62, 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not be quiet, until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nation shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal anthem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm, and we read together. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his works, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him, he remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Galatians 4, 4 to 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, saying, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ken. Please stand if you're able to for the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the time had come for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifice, a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die, wouldn't see death, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came into the, in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he, Simeon, took Jesus up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, and you have that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And as his father and mother marveled at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping and fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. When, when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child, Jesus, grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Lord. Proceeded for the next hymn, Let Our Gladness Have No End. Son to save us, Christ his Son. 
hand to save us. See the loveliest blooming rose, alleluia. From the branch of Jesse grows, alleluia. On this day God gave us Christ his Son to save us. Christ his Son to save us. Into flesh has made the word, alleluia. Day God gave us Christ His Son to save us. Christ His Son to save us. What a great time to be together, and a great way to spend New Year's Eve in God's house. Of course, you could say I'm biased, but. Really, I'm not, I don't think. Because even if I wasn't speaking God's word as pastor, I still would want to be here. So our text for this morning, from Luke chapter 2, but would also touch on the other passages that were read by Ken from Holy Scripture. So there's a fellow, there's a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Doesn't say how old, we figure, well, he's an old man. I, didn't, I don't have a copy of the bulletin, so I don't, whether he's old or whether the person's 40 years old or a young buck like Keaton, um, it could be a young fellow, but there was a, he was a man whose name was Simeon, and he was waiting for Jesus to hold him. And he was, then he, it's like he could die, didn't matter what happened. So that's our Luke text. So we pray, gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's grace, mercy, and peace be unto us all from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. In the Christmas account, and I don't like, I don't like to call it a story because stories are often concocted. Like you're telling stories. It's like, is it true or not? So it's, it's a biblical account of the birth of Jesus. So you can call it a story, but for me it's an account. It's just like um, it's found in this book of the Bible. Well, when did it get lost? And even a verse isn't really a verse. It's a stanza or a verses in Bible stanza. Anyway, the shepherds and the wise men in the Bible, they get a lot of press time, overweightedly so, I could say. They're in nativity scenes and on many Christmas cards. Shepherds and angels, their Christmas carols written about them. We just sang about angels. And they're known wide and throughout the world in multiple languages, many different customs. And angels and shepherds, they're in essentially every Christmas program. We hear about them on the big days of the church year, Christmas Eve, Epiphany, and, and so we say, well, what would be without shepherds and angels, right? Well, the fellow we heard about today, and yeah, there's angels all around, and, but his name was Simeon. Well, he kind of falls through the cracks. He's not in any nativity scene or on Christmas cards. Don't, at least I don't recall any. No well-known Christmas uh, carols about Simeon or even bringing Anna the prophetess. Maybe it's because we usually hear about him the Sunday after Christmas today. So Simeon, the world would say Christmas would be just fantastic without him and Anna the prophetess. Except... Of those three, the shepherds, the wise men, Simeon, and fourthly, Anna, who can we relate most to? Do you relate to being a shepherd? Well, if you're on the farm like Alan and Louise or others of us who've been on your moving around cattle, we never had any sheep on our farm, did we, Helga? 
We just had goats when we were in Dryden, a neighbor, and the goats would end up being on the car for some reason. <laughs> they loved to climb. Yeah, so shepherds, well, and hearing angels. I haven't heard any angels, but we sing about them, and we know that angels watch over us. The Bible talks about us, and others, like, don't forget to entertain strangers. Like, don't let them rip us off or steal our, um, ourselves uh, vacant. But uh, entertaining angels, uh, strangers is entertaining angels unaware. That's what the Bible says. So, yeah, the shepherds, well, they hear the angels. They leave their flocks. They go to Bethlehem the very night that Jesus was born. It's pretty incredible, but something we'll never get to do. The wise men, how wise were they? They get to see and follow a special star. The wise men journeyed a long and perhaps difficult way, and they fell down and gave their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. That's pretty cool. But again, it's not something that... I don't know, like Carolyn, you'll probably never do it, right? I don't think I will, or Henry, or Saul. Yeah, going places. If there's three different people, they usually say, well, like MapQuest gave me three different options, getting from Bruderheim to Camrose. I just pressed fastest way and just about hit an animal on the way. Burnt a bunch of rubber, but thankfully the animal's okay and I'm okay. Anyway... There's all kinds of cool things that the Christmas account has. <clears throat> Simeon, he's sort of left to the sideline. Anna the prophetess, too. He's kind of different than the other characters, this Simeon, in the biblical account of the nativity of our Lord. He's kind of ordinary. He didn't get to see Jesus when Jesus was born. Jesus came to him. Jesus came to him in church. Sound familiar? And Simeon didn't get to see angels or a special star. What he had was the word of God in the flesh. Simeon, he's a lot like you and me. He's like us. And we can go on and say, well, I have God's word in my house. Family altar, yeah. I can meet God on the golf course or wherever, but it's like the old story is whenever, you ever, whenever have you seen a, a skunk or a chipmunk baptize somebody on the golf course? I've never seen that happen. It's usually in, in God's house, in a Christian family. So perhaps Simeon and Anna is a part of the Christmas account where we want to put it. And yet, Simeon isn't there. And so the church, the Christian church, has decided to give Simeon more press than the shepherds, certainly on this day. For a while... All these that we've talked about are big days, Christmas and Epiphany. The words of Simeon are sung, as Pat said, throughout every Communion Sunday, really, for, and throughout many churches, through many, many Sundays throughout the church year. We sing them right after we taste and know how good the Lord is, taking the Lord's body and blood in our hands, in our mouths, as Simeon did into him. And so it is. We get to be much like Simeon. And as Pat said, and we memorize the lines. And we read it in a little different version, but it's really, Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face or in the sight of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. So with these words, Simeon is saying incredibly magnificent words. The shepherds went to see the Lamb of God lying in the manger. The wise men went to see the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one to whom every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. But Simeon tells us what this is and what it means for him, for you and me and for all people, that because Jesus has come into the world, we can depart in peace. We can live by God's grace. And no matter what comes, whether the health care system falls apart, as was told to me, our health care system is broken, 
um, whatever. It's way better than what it was in Simeon's time. And that's why Annie and my Pat, your dad passed away, or Otto's dad passed away, and so many others, Tom's wife passed away. But even all those and all the saints that have gone before us know and we know that we can depart in peace. We have hope beyond this life. We have a hope and know that God's salvation is way far and beyond the salvation that we could ever experience in the world. God's sin offering, Jesus, is here. Wherever two or three or three are gathered together in my name, says Jesus, I'm with them. So praying together, having prayer ministry, Jesus is with us. Casting out demons even in Jesus' name. By God's will, and if it be God's will, sometimes God gives us a thorn in the side to keep us close to him. But ultimately, it's for our salvation. The King, Jesus, who came to serve his people, gives us life and light. The Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, is with us so that we who die will die in peace. And that's a great Christmas present, really. Most people I've spoken to, or you and I would speak to, want to live and go on. And if, if Anne had her will, and it's not about Anne, but she would want to be here. Say, well, why'd you leave me, Dave? Or why didn't you bring me to Grace Camrose? Because Grace family is so precious. But it doesn't happen. Yeah. And so for many people, they don't want to be in hospital. They don't want to be in pain. And yet Simeon tell, is telling us that even in the hospital, even in great pain, even in accidents, and that's why they're called accidents. Accidents aren't supposed to happen, but they do. But it's not an accident that you and I were born. God planned from the beginning of time, and he's outlined our days even before one of them came to be. He knit us together in our mother's womb. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139. Anyway, in all these painful places that we end up being, the Lord is with us, giving us peace and hope and comfort. If death comes, or pain comes, death comes, bad diagnosis, suddenly unexpected, we can die in peace as God's people in Christ. The peace of knowing that death is not the end. The peace of knowing that our sins will not haunt us. They won't put a wedge between us and God because Jesus has taken the prickle for us. He shed his blood for us and the whole world. The one who conquers sin and death is here. Jesus is here among us, bringing us glad tidings and great joy, which are to be for everybody. He has come to put and help us put our spiritual house in order. God is able group would talk about that a lot. We do too as Lutheran Christians. So we can die with a peaceful mind and a peace-filled heart. And yet while it's a great Christmas time being here around Simeon, God's word speaking to us about Simeon, it's also why Simeon hasn't really caught on as a part of our Christmas pageants. Nobody really wants to think about death at Christmas. And yet, sometimes death intrudes into our Christmases. When we try to celebrate for the first time without our loved one present, it hurts. Or when we know that our loved one won't be here next Christmas, we still remember that God loves us with an everlasting love letting us know that even though you're going through valleys and shadows of death, the Lord is with us. His rod and his staff comfort us. So Simeon, God through Simeon, and people like Simeon, you and me, teaches us that there is never a last Christmas for those who die in Christ. For those who die in Christ, for us, we enter into a Christmas that never ends. 
Because really, Christmas is every day. Easter is every day for us who are in Christ. Every day is a day with Jesus. And the world would say, how boring is that? It must be that you don't have any fun at all. No. There's incredible joy of being in Christ. It doesn't mean that we walk around with our faces down to the ground. There's joy in the Lord. And it's not a crazy joy, although it can be a crazy joy. But it's knowing that God loves us in, the spite, in spite of all that could ever happen to us. And so it's like, name, name the worst bad news that you, you had today or yesterday. Well, God is with you. God is with us in a real, true, and sincere way. A way better way than just saying, like even our best friend would say, oh, it's horrible that it happened to you. Give you a hug. Hugs help, but sometimes the hurt still carries on. We don't need to deal and be with our troubles and with our misery and our grief by ourselves because we have each other and we have God's word. We can count on it. His word is forever. And so God gives us hope beyond this world, eternal life, and hope in life and joy even now. Even now, each day that we live as, is a day in Christ's arms. And our arms, too, are hugging each other for Christ's sake. A day to share and to shine his love and care. It may not always seem like it. It's just maybe, in this case, another Hebrew mother and father bringing their child to the temple, whose name is Mary and Joseph, brought Jesus, right? It wasn't a so-called special event, like in terms of the church life. That was the typical thing. Hebrew moms and dads brought their children to the temple for cleansing, giving turtle dove, a little bit of an offering. And Mary and Joseph were one of them. And Jesus wasn't their only child. They would have, well, the special child, the savior of the world, they had other children. I have Roman Catholic friends who say, well, it's the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, she wasn't a virgin forever. She had other children. So Joseph and Mary, after Jesus, would have brought other children that they had to the temple for cleansing. And of course, Jesus was special. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Kind of ordinary, though, for Mary and Joseph doing that. And that's what water in the Word does. That holy baptism for us, it's kind of ordinary. And yet it's special because we know that it's not only God's Word, uh, not only water, but it's God's Word and God's promise that's attached to the Word, which makes it a means of forgiveness of sins and life and salvation, means of grace is what we call it in the Lutheran tradition. And so for us, it's the Word of God, the promise of God, the Holy Spirit bringing us to faith, telling us that though our lives seem quite ordinary or even in rough shape, that we are loved by God and we are under the care of our Savior. And God uses hands and feet around us, the prayers of other people, Husbands, wives, moms and dads, brothers and sisters, grandchildren, neighbors, and even our enemies need our prayer. They need our prayers even more than those around us at times, that they would come, their hearts would be as one with us. And so it's really what makes Merry Christmas Merry. It makes it a joyful Christmas. We could say, keep Simeon in Christmas. He's so ordinary. He's like one of us. Keep Christ in Christmas. And Simeon and Anna the prophetess, keep God's word in Christmas. Kick out Santa. Although it's lots of merriness and ho, ho, ho. But Santa's really shouldn't be the center of Christmas. It's about Christ. And we're not being grouchy or scrooges by saying that. Celebrate Santa, but... It's a peripheral idea, brought out in 1939 by Coca-Cola, right? Making the big Santa commercial. And so, how do we do Simeon with Christmas or New Year's Eve commemoration or celebration? We always hear his accent. 
or his story or account this time. And this day needs a better name, actually, anyway. We could call it the eve of the circumcision of Jesus, our Lord. And yet Simeon is perfect for this day. Day of Simeon for New Year's Eve. For this day was a turning point for Simeon. His waiting was over. And Anna's also, the prophetess. The promise was fulfilled. And Simeon, for sure, he could look into the future with confidence that he could die anyway and be ready for whatever would happen the next day or the next day after. He held his Savior, Jesus, in his arms. What could possibly be better than that? And this too, we don't know how long Simeon lived after this. Was he an old man, as is assumed in pictures? Or was he a younger fellow? The scriptures are silent. We don't know. Yeah, we just don't know. And that's okay. We don't know what this new year, 2024, is going to bring either. This day is a turning point for us in a way. It's the close of 2023 and the start of a new year tomorrow. This day is when many look back to the year gone by and look forward to the year ahead. The joys and maybe even the regrets of the past and the hopes and dreams and even fears of the future. And yet like Simeon, Jesus changes things. Like Simeon, we can face the future, whatever the future brings, with confidence, knowing that the Lord is with us. For our Savior has come for us with forgiveness for the past and hope for the future. In Christ, our future is bright. It's incredible. And so whatever happens, whatever comes, we're ready with the Lord behind us, pushing us on, leading us and guiding us. And so we have that hymn. It's so nimden manahanda. Lord, take my hand and lead me. A long life's way. Direct control and feed me from day to day. Without thy grace and favor, I fall astray, so take my hand and lead me along life's way. So from this day on, Simeon knew he could die in peace. And that we know also. We can depart this year, 2023, in peace, and we could die as Ann Abrams and as so many. As I said, she wanted to be in church. And it sucks that I shouldn't. Her sons are, Daryl and Doug, you're watching this. I love you. But go to church, please, for yourself. They would want their mom. Hopefully, Anne wanted their, her children to take her to church. Too bad I had to, but I had the blessing of doing that and brought her to Camrose. Yeah, a turning point, day by day, with Jesus. We can depart this year, we can depart this life in peace because our sins, our failures, our mistakes, our screw-ups, and our rebellion have been forgiven. All of them. If our neighbor doesn't forgive us, we know that God has forgiven us for Christ's sake. There's no old person's skeleton in our closet or monster of sin under the bed. Nothing that we need to take super-duper counseling over. Christ is with us. He's waiting to come and call us as his people and send us forward again and again in his name so that other people will have the hope that we have in us. So for now, for us, it's new life. It's a new day. Celebrate and rejoice. The turning of a new page, not only of a new calendar, but of a new life in Christ. So the shepherds and the wise men, even though they get all kinds of press and the best carols around, well, long after that press cycle has ended, the cards have been put away or 
are not looked at anymore and the carols are put away, we'll still sing what Simeon has for us, or God has for us through Simeon. Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace. That language, the carol that helps us to know that everything is well in Christ this day and always. The peace of God which surpasses all of our understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds in the one true faith in Christ Jesus, both now and to life everlasting. Amen. Please stand. Let's confess our faith in our great God in the words penned in the Apostles' Creed. As I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayer of the church we'll pray as given, as outlined, and also there'll be some other petitions. Eternal Lord, in the fullness of time you sent your Son, born of a woman, born under the law, Jesus, to redeem us and to give us the adoption as your sons and heirs and daughters too. Hear us, Heavenly Father, as we call to you in Jesus' name. Give us grace to rejoice in Christ's blessed incarnation and grant us a glad new year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lead your church, O Lord, to follow the example of blessed Simeon and Anna, the prophetess too, that all baptized Christians would embrace 
the Christ child by word and faith, and so be ready to depart whenever they are called. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood on earth is named, bless Christian fellow, uh, fellowship and Christian families with your promises. Give parents diligence and delight in your work in through us and grant your favor upon all children and grandchildren that they would grow up in strength and wisdom and love towards you, Lord God, and one another. Bless widows and widowers, orphans, uh, broken families, those addicted to any number of drugs and, and multiple addictions. Grant broken families your mercy and give them joy in the redemption that you have won for us all in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, mighty Lord, you have given power to the nations and to those who govern for the good of their people and to the good of their neighboring nations too. Bless our government and all of our leaders that justice and truth would prevail and that your people would be free to live at peace with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, receive our prayers for those who suffer from loneliness and heartache. Comfort them with the sure and certain knowledge that you will never forsake them. Give them family, good and faithful partners and families within the household of faith with whom they can find loving companionship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, help the sick and the suffering, especially those who desire our prayers, including Hildegard Steele, Wayne Fraser, Albert Magdalen, Erna Adam, Henry and Carolyn Simonson, Louise Kurtz, Gary Voss, Dr. Stabbert, Slabbert, and Lord be with the whole family as her dear sister came and mentioned of her grandchildren being involved in an accident. Be with them all as a family in their trauma and the other vehicle that collided in their trauma and provide healing according to your grace and mercy. Lord, comfort those who mourn, especially the family of Ann Abrams and Michelle Hewen, Hewen, Earl Griffin, family of Jackie Burke and Albert, Albert Sellen. O oh Lord, fill their hearts with a certain hope of the resurrection and of your unending love in Christ Jesus and of our love for them too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of lasting peace, show your mercy to those who receive the Lord's Supper on this day, that they, that we would behold your salvation in the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us. And like with Saint Simeon, be well prepared to depart in peace, to die in peace according to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us through Jesus Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're seated. We sing the offertory to let God, we see what, uh, what you've, you've, see what's given and uh, receive the offering.
now you send us in your name. Please rise if you're able to. Gracious God, you give us so many blessings. Even so many that we don't even know. Even pains around us and troubles are given at times to be a blessing to us because they wake us up as to our sleep, our sleep that's going to be leading to death and hell. Lord, wake us up to your grace and to your favor. And so we thank you for giving us blessing after blessing this past year and through the years past. And Lord, we give you but your own, and whatever the gift may be, and our offerings, our tithes, our talents, our being here, for all that we have is a gift from you. Uh, for your service. And so, Lord, may we thy mercies thus as stewards to receive, gladly as you bless us to you our first fruits give. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. And it is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy upon us and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The peace of the Lord be with us always. Amen. Amen. May be seated for Lamb of God and communion. <laughs> ready. First of all, we'll have the leaders and then the rest of the congregation. Welcome to our Lord's table. Yeah. David, take eat, for this is the very body of our Lord Jesus, broken for you. John, take eat. Donna, take eat, the true body of our Lord Jesus, broken for you. Take drink, David, for this is the true blood of our Lord Jesus shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sin. John, take drink, true blood of our Lord Jesus shed on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. saving faith in Christ Jesus, both now and to life everlasting. Depart in peace, sins forgiven, loved by God. Amen.
please stand if you're able to. Let's pray, pray the prayer of thanksgiving together. So let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this life-giving gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in love, in love, in love toward one another. Through Christ, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Look upon us with favor and give us always his peace. Amen. Seated for the concluding hymn. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each your love possessing triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for your gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of your salvation in our hearts and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to your truth may we be found. Savior, when your love shall call us from our struggling pilgrim way. Let not fear of death appall us, glad your summons to obey. May we ever, may we ever reign with you in endless days. sometimes receive the comment, it's like you didn't pray for this individual or that. Um, lots of people we can pray for, but just know that uh, all the prayers and petitions, whether spoken or not, we raise before the Lord in, in the prayer that he taught us. So and sometimes the pastor says for these or any other prayers, either that which gives us incredible grief or joy, we bring in the prayer that our Lord has taught us in the Lord's prayer. So... So definitely this morning we could pray for Elizabeth Platts, Mark Keene, and even Aaron Jensen. I thought uh, God would give uh, us and, and those people, our brothers and sisters, uh, renewed life and, uh, and life within uh, the body of Christ, knowing that they are dearly loved. And as we sang, uh, God loves us dearly. God is dearly grants us salvation. God loves us dearly. So we go in peace. We continue to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.